Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Patch Report for November 2022. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness for the Zero Day Initiative and our Chief Patch Wrangler. We've got a lot to talk about this month for a smaller release and a lot to talk about considering Adobe has no release at all, which, as far as I can tell, is a first, at least going back to 2017, which is uh, where I really started keeping close track of their patches. Uh, so there have been plenty of months where they've released only one CVE or one patch, but since that time, there's been no month where they've released zero patches. So I don't know if it's just a coincidence that this happens to fall on election day in the US, or if it's just a coincidence, we know there's plenty of Adobe bugs waiting to be patched as we submitted them ourselves, but no Adobe patches for November. So if that's what you're waiting for, good luck uh, and take the month off, congratulations. We do have plenty to talk about when it comes to Microsoft though, so let's dive into the blog and start from there. So looking at the blog, we have 64 new re CVEs being released this month in uh, quite a few different products, but pretty much the same components that we are used to seeing. Office, Windows components, Azure, Azure RTOS. Uh, of the 64, nine are rated critical, 52 are rated important in severity. And really the ones that we're looking for the most are these Exchange Server uh, updates. So these bugs are the ones that were purchased by ZDI back in September, uh, and then active, active exploitation was discovered later uh, before the October patch Tuesday. We expected them to be fixed last month, but they weren't. Uh, and we wondered where they were, and now we find them. Here they are. Uh, so definitely take a close look at these and uh, make sure these get rolled out quickly once you uh, test and deploy them. Um, there's several exchange bugs to talk about this month, but these are the two that are under active attack. We've actually got a lot of active attacks to discuss. We've got four additional bugs that are listed as zero days and uh, under active exploit in the wild. The first one is this bug in Windows scripting languages, which is in JScript, uh, specifically JScript 9. It's listed as being in the wild. Uh, I put this one right under the exchange bugs because this could be used in watering hole attacks where you just browse to a website or connect to a server share and you could get code execution. So that'll definitely be a popular bug. Uh, it's also a good reminder that uh, it gets code execution at the level of the logged on user. So don't browse the web when you're logged on as admin, please. You use a lower privilege, you know, log on for that. Uh, if you've been following Will Dorman on Twitter, you probably have seen some of his posts about Mark of the Web and how it can be bypassed. Mark of the Web is an interesting feature in Windows uh, where files downloaded from the internet have a you know an identifier saying this was downloaded from the internet and it should uh cause like if you download a document from the internet where it should pop up additional warning dialogue saying hey you downloaded this from the internet uh, but apparently this can be bypassed uh, there are two of these bugs getting fixed this month only one of them is listed as being under active attack so definitely take some time and uh follow that see how that goes and of course we're back at windows print spooler um, we're used to seeing a lot of Windows print spooler bugs get fixed since print nightmare. Uh, this is the first one I recall that is listed as active uh, attack at the time of release at least. So print nightmare is that terrible gift that keeps on giving that in-law that just will not leave from the holidays. Uh, so yeah, uh, as always you could disable the print spooler as a workaround. Of course that breaks printing so not a very feasible workaround for many people. And the final bug under active attack this month is the Windows CNG Key Isolation Service, which stands for Cryptography Application Interface Next Generation. Uh, it's something I'm certainly not as familiar with, uh, but it's an elevation of privilege that's listed as under active attack. These types of bugs typically get combined with uh, other code execution bugs to take over a system. Uh, and with all of the other uh, in the wild exploits, there's no indication of how, how widely this is being used. Uh, I'm guessing that this is somewhat targeted at this point, uh, but don't let that uh, dissuade you from testing and deploying these updates quickly. Uh, yeah, they're active in the wild. So taking a look at the table, we'll see quite a bit of red up top there as we look at everything. Uh, and we'll get through some of the other critical bugs too. There's nothing really earth shaking um, in the rest of the bugs. However, there are some things that I do wanna cover explicitly because I find them very interesting, but you can take a look at the table at your own leisure. 
Now I mentioned some additional exchange server bugs and these are the first ones I want to spend a little extra time on because three of them came through uh, ZDI's own uh, vulnerability researcher, Piotr, and I'm not gonna pronounce his last name because I will say it very poorly. I don't wanna do that to him. But the first bug is really interesting because it is a hard-coded path to a directory on the D drive. So there's uh, Exchange is looking for something specifically with a hard-coded path to a D drive folder. Now, if there are D drives that exist on a system by default, low privileged users have right access to the D drive. So they can put a malicious DLL there and Exchange would load it. Uh, alternatively, a low privileged user uh, on a system that doesn't have a D drive could attach a optical disc or USB drive and it might get assigned the letter D and load it from there. So uh, yeah, hard-coded path and exchange that hasn't been discovered until the end of 2022. Neat, that's, a, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I, I think it's some great research. You also had two spoofing bugs that were patched that uh, allow you to do some NTM, NTLM, excuse me, I'm gonna get all of those letters in there. NTLM relaying attacks. Uh, so you gotta love relay attacks. Obviously those would be authenticated. Uh, but uh, nice for lateral movement within an enterprise. So exchange admins, uh, I feel for you. I've been there. I know you've got some long weekends ahead of you. Fingers crossed, toes crossed, whatever it takes. Burn some incense, you know, we're with you. Good luck uh, updating, but please do update. These are some serious bugs. We know some are under active attack. So good luck with those. Moving on to the critical rated fixes. The ones that really stand out to me the most are the uh, privilege escalation bugs in Kerberos. Uh, not because I think that they're going to get exploited a lot, even though they do have an exploit index rating of one. Uh, it's because you can't just patch them, okay? It'll take a little bit more than patching. And I link to two KB articles here, and that that's going to lead you to additional information from Microsoft on other changes and next steps that you're going to need to make. Also, when we get down to the important severity update, there's a similar one for net logon uh, that's going to require some additional options too. And Microsoft notes that this is a phased rollout of fixes. So look for additional updates and further impacts to Kerberos and net logon functionality as we move along. I'll continue to uh, look for these and try and note. Uh, these to me are, this, these types of bugs are the ones that we need to pay attention to the most because we don't want to get lulled into just patch it because just patch it isn't always the case. Sometimes you need to do more than just patch it. And this is one of those cases. So please take a look at this closely and uh, make sure you read and understand those KB articles and take the next steps needed. Looking at the other critical updates, uh, a few bugs in PPTP that we've seen uh, in the past. Uh, there's quite a few researchers now who are targeting older vulnerabilities, excuse me, older protocols looking for newer vulnerabilities. PPT, WINS, uh, MSRPC, we're seeing that sort of thing. Um, we continue to see that if you're using PPTP, uh, probably should upgrade to something more modern. Um, interestingly, there's a critical rated denial of service bug in Hyper-V, which is unusual. It's not usually critical. You don't see critical DOSs. Uh, but Microsoft uh, states that in this case, a guest OS could affect the functionality of the Hyper-V host. Uh, so I guess that gets the critical severity rating, even though it's a 6.5 on the CVSS scale. And it's just one of those areas where CVSS and severity ratings just don't jive. Um, so definitely take a look at that. There are quite a few other RCE updates, uh, including some patches uh, submitted by ZDI vulnerability researchers Hussein Latvi, uh, as well as Matt Powell and Michael DuPont. Um, I can pronounce those names, so good for them. Uh, you know, a lot of cases of these uh, user interactions gonna be required, uh, such as like opening a document or something. The, the one that really concerns me here is the SharePoint bug. It does rely on authentication, but a default user in SharePoint has all the permissions needed to take advantage of this bug. We've seen SharePoint bugs like this exploited in the past. This one's currently not under active attack. I'm going to be clear on that. Uh, but similar bugs have been used in active attacks in the past, including bugs that were a couple of years old by the time the attacks were detected. So don't sleep on this one. If you're using SharePoint, make sure you're updating it, please. Uh, don't be that person who gets active attacks uh, when the patch has been out for a couple of years. Um, 
So beyond that, nothing really scary here. Moving on to the EOPs, again, there's not a whole lot that are super interesting. I'll mention the net log on one again, because again, here's a link to a KB article that says the additional steps that you need to take. Uh, the other one that I do want to call out here is an EOP in SIS internal services. So a lot of incident responders, for example, use Sysmon uh, looking to recover a system that's been potentially compromised. Make sure your incident response tools are up to date. Don't be that guy or that gal who goes to do IR and gets their system compromised because you're using an out of date tool. Um, not that I would know anything about that at all um, from personal experience that you can prove. Uh, looking at the info disclosure bugs, we've got eight bugs. Most of these are just leaking contents of memory. So interesting from a certain perspective and you need these types of bugs a lot of times uh, as a first step in a multi-bug chain to do a sandbox escape. Uh, the only one really here that's interesting to me is a business central bug. And I'm not too familiar with this, uh, but apparently if you are able to get admin credentials, you could lead to the disclosure of integration secrets that are owned by a different partner. And presumably then you would be able to impersonate that partner. So kind of interesting from that point of view. Um, security feature bugs, security feature bypass bugs. We've already mentioned the mark of the web ones. Uh, there's an, an interesting one in Excel. Apparently the indirect function will actually do some content checks when you use that. Uh, and this bug allows you to evade those content checks. But really the, the interesting bug here is a bug in BitLocker. So it allows an uh, attacker with physical access to bypass device encryption and get access to the encrypted data, which BitLocker, you have one job and it's to kind of do this. So again, this is one, it's like, will this really be exploited? Uh, I don't know, but still you have to have physical access. You have to do some other things to, to really exploit this. So maybe not, but still you had one job. We have a couple of denial of service bugs to talk about. Um, most of these involve older uh, protocols, like I've already said. So we've got PPTP, uh, Radius, NAT, kind of stops that protocol from responding. Um, the same is true for Kerberos, which a, a denial of service in Kerberos could impact logging and uh, logging on and other functionality it relies on the Kerberos service. So definitely don't ignore that. Only one spoofing bug this month in SharePoint server, uh, but beyond it being authenticated, there's not really any information regarding the attack scenario. Uh, that one doesn't too concern me as much. And finally, we do have a new advisory this month. We don't get a lot of advisories. So interesting there. Uh, and it's adding defense in depth functionality to Microsoft Office. You can check that out. Uh, defense in depth stuff is always good. Anything we can do to make attacks harder for the threat actor, I'm a big fan of. In this case, we're hardening uh, IRM protections, which is, I believe, information rights management on documents. So that's great. Cool. Uh, make sure you apply that as well. Uh, so that is it. Uh, that is our brief but heavy, heavy uh, November patch update. Our next patch Tuesday and the final one of 2022 will be on December 13th. Uh, and look, I see a, a, a typo right there in my blog. How about that? So uh, I'll go fix that typo and then, uh, yeah, we'll be back on December 13th to talk about our final patch Tuesday of the year. And uh, hey, what a great year it's been. With this amount of updates, it's been the busiest year of Microsoft, the second busiest year, excuse me, of Microsoft patches ever. 2020 was still phenomenal, uh, but we still have December left to go. So we'll see the final number. So, hey, it's been great fun. Thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I will see you until December. Until then, stay safe, happy patching, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.